Hey, what's new and exciting? It's Kevin O'Shaughnessy here, and today I'm gonna teach you my method for how to learn songs faster. Now, we've all been there, especially if you're a beginner. Maybe you're just having a hard time understanding how the song works. Maybe there's a section that keeps coming up and surprising you. Well, today I'm gonna give you my method that I developed in high school to help you overcome those problems and more. Before we get going, let me point out one thing. This is not a hack. This is a skill that needs to be developed. And if you follow the steps, you should be able to develop the skill in pretty short order. So what is this skill that needs to be developed? Listening, actual dedicated listening. It's not all that difficult, but we don't usually take the time to do it. And if you're a beginner, well then some of the things that I share in this video may be extremely helpful. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my song, Taking Up Arms from the album, Persistence of Vision. If you wanna to listen to the whole song from start to finish, you can find it at kevinoshaughnessy.com music. The link will be in the description below. Now, if I have to learn a song quickly, the last thing I'm actually gonna grab is gonna be my guitar. Instead, the first thing I'm gonna grab is a notebook and a pencil. So once I've got my notebook and pencil, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna figure out the form of the song. Like many concepts in music, form can be used to describe things that are happening on a macro level and a micro level. So we could be looking at song forms or we could be looking at the form of a specific melodic phrase. And put simply, form is just the way music is organized. If you're talking about song forms, how many verses and choruses are there? What order are they in? Taking a little time to discover this in the song will make it easier to learn. So now let me walk you through taking up arms and I'll show you what I'm talking about. By the way, you don't need the multitracks or a DAW to do this. Any MP3 player, any, any way that you're listening to music will work. If all you have is the, is the stereo recording, that's how I did it when I was in high school. But for you beginners, for whom this might be a completely different exercise, I have the multitracks here so that I can show you what to listen for. So first, we obviously hear some kind of an introduction. Now, if you don't know what the names of the various sections are, don't worry about it. Just mark down where you hear a change in mood or energy level or instrumentation. Chances are those are section breaks. Next up, we've got a first verse. How far is too far to fall before there's no point in making the climb? Now we've got a chorus. Cause who I am, and who I was, and who I wanna be. Notice that there's a very big difference between the instrumentation and the mood of the verse and the chorus. Notice also, if you can hear it, that there's a completely different chord progression going on. Here we have a guitar solo. So in the interest of brevity, I didn't go through the entire song. However, this is the breakdown of the form. We have an introduction, we have a first verse, we have a chorus. There's a little bit of an interlude, which is very reminiscent of the introduction. We have a second verse, which has a different instrumentation. We have another chorus. Then we have a bridge, followed by a guitar solo, another interlude, which is fairly reminiscent of the first verse. We have a third verse and a chorus and a coda. Now we've got the form and we can see that the chorus shows up three times. The verse shows up three times. That means basically once you've learned the chorus or once you've learned the verse, all you have to do is repeat that section of music where it's appropriate. Next up for me is to learn the vocal. And I don't necessarily mean learn all the words, but at the very least, you wanna get familiar with the tune. Notice the direction. When does it go up? Does it go down? Does it stay kind of Johnny One Note style and stay sort of around the same couple of notes? Uh, is there a big difference in register between the verse and the chorus? These are gonna provide cues that will allow you to keep your place in the song while you're playing it. Notice that in this vocal, the melody actually climbs from a lower register to a higher register in the chorus. If I find the strength and the will, will I find that I'm out of time? Cause who I am and who I was. 
The next step in this process for me is to learn what the bass guitar is doing. Now, most of the time, the bass is going to have two responsibilities simultaneously. It's going to provide the harmonic foundation for the song, which basically means it's going to be playing largely the roots of the chords. But it's also going to be responsible for reinforcing the rhythmic aspect of the song. You may have noticed at this point that the rhythm for the bass guitar often follows the rhythm of the kick drum, and that's not an accident. Now check this out. This is really cool. Most of the time the bass player is following along with the kick drum rhythm like we mentioned earlier. However, there are moments, particularly in the chorus, where he's waiting for breaks in the vocal melody to play a fill. Listen to these two parts together. They're choosing their sides and taking up arms inside of me. The lines are drawn. The now see if you can hear that within the context of the song. They're choosing their sides and taking up arms inside. Now, in most songs, the vocal, or whatever's carrying the melody, and the bass basically make up the whole song. Remember, the bass does double duty. It has the harmonic foundation, but it also provides a lot of the rhythmic foundation. So that alone creates the bed for your accompaniment. And then, of course, your vocal, or, or your lead instrument, has got the melody. Next up, I'm going to dig into the drums. Now, I'm looking for a handful of things in this case. I'm looking for the grooves, right? Uh, is it an open hi-hat? Is it a closed hi-hat? Is it a ride cymbal? Is there a logic to how those choices are made during the performance? I'm also listening for fills. Drum fills are usually the cues that the musicians in the band will pay attention to to let them know that a new section of music is coming. I'm also going to pay attention to the relationship of the drums with the bass, and I'm also going to see if the drums do any accenting of the melody. Every once in a while, if there's some really dramatic moment in the vocal, the drums might kick with that, and I want to pay attention to it. Just a couple of more steps here, and next up is guitars. Guitars can be pretty interesting in a rock context because sometimes they're just strumming the chords along with the rest of the rhythm section, and other times they've got riffs that they're playing that serve either as an ostinato or a counter melody. Now, before you start listening to the guitars, you might want to ask yourself, how many are there? I don't usually count the stereo left and right guitars as two separate guitars because they're both playing the same part. And if you're trying to learn this for a live performance, you only need one. So let's listen to what's going on here. How far is too far to fall before there's no point in making the climb? Now here in the first verse, we can hear that this one guitar is playing an ostinato, right? That's a repeated figure on which other music is layered. Now when we get to the first chorus, notice that the guitars are just playing whole notes. This makes a lot of room in the arrangement for both the vocal and the bass. And who I wanna be. Now in the second chorus, notice that there is a counter melody being played by harmonized guitars. Now, this song doesn't have any keyboards in it, but if it did, it might be playing several different roles within the same song. They could switch from section to section. Some common roles of the keyboard are the primary accompaniment. So if you think about a Billy Joel or an Elton John, that's their instrument. So that's going to be the primary accompaniment. They could be doing pads, which are just chords, usually in whole notes, that kind of fill in the gaps in the rhythm. They could be doing some kind of motor-like thing, either with straight eighth notes or arpeggios or some kind of ostinato like the guitar in the first verse of this song. Or they might be doubling the other instruments. And those roles can switch from section to section within one song. So that's it. 
That's my process. First, I listen to the song to get the form. Then I listen to the vocal, the bass, the drums, the guitars, then the keyboards. Only after I've done all that and I've made observations about how they all go together, that's when I pick up my guitar and start learning the chords and the riffs. Now you may be wondering, how does this make anything any faster? Well, in the beginning, it may not. This is a skill that you might have to develop and put some time into. So in the beginning, it might seem to slow things down. But the more songs you apply this process to, the more you're gonna realize that there are patterns that are used from song to song and artist to artist, making future songs much easier to learn. Plus, I'd be willing to bet at this point, it's gonna take you at least as long to continue stumbling through the song without any kind of a map. Taking this time on the front end, learning all of the various cues that the other instruments are gonna provide for you, will save you a ton of time and frustration later on. So I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any specific issues about guitar or music in general, check the description for details on how I can help you out. In the meantime, I've been Kevin O'Shaughnessy. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Now go practice and I'll see you in the next video.